Hey, this is Ian Moore with Dave Sinclair Buick GMC here in St. Louis. Today we're going to do a walk around on a 2022 GMC Acadia, and this particular one is in the uh, AT4 trim. A lot of what is going to make this a little bit different than maybe your standard SLT or Denali is the lack of a lot of that shiny chrome. Um, so on the grill, they did a polished, uh, kind of a polished darker chrome look, um, as well as uh, around the trim pieces on the fog lamps, as well as black wheels, um, black molding around the windows. And overall, just a little bit more rugged, off-roady kind of appearance with the, with the tires and things like that. And some of the other things you'll find on the front, um, the LED wraparounds, which are pretty standard on most of the GMC v uh, vehicles now, uh, LED fog lamps, as well as, uh, you'll notice these little dots here, those are your front parking sensors, so it's going to let you know if you're going to get close to anything up front while you're parking. And like I mentioned before, uh, the AT4 kind of has a little bit more of that rugged look to it. So you're going to have the 17 inch black wheels here wrapped in an all-terrain tire uh, from Continental as well as the polished look here which on most of the other ones is a full chrome um, AT4 badging on the sides, black roof rails and on this one as well as most of our vehicles uh, all four door passive entry system um, just to press the chrome button here on the side of the handle lock unlock get in get out makes it really easy you don't have to fumble around for your keys. And also in the back, uh, you'll find the black chrome here, which matches the front. The parking sensors in the rear, once again, going to let you know if you're getting close to anything behind you. Uh, dual exhaust, and then this particular one's going to come with a power programmable lift gate. What that means is it's programmable. You can set the height, uh, so if you're a little shorter, you can set it a little bit lower so you're not on your tiptoes trying to reach it. And with the lift gate in the back, uh, there's multiple ways to open it. Uh, you can use the key fob. There's a button on the door, you can kick underneath it, and there's also a button here on the rear hatch to, to open and close it. And some different things here about the back. Two seat in the back row, which can easily be dropped. Uh, there is basically a charger of some sort for everybody in the back seat. Um, USB here on the left hand side, 12 volt charger here on the back, so both back seats are covered. USBs in the center stack up front for the second row seats. Um, and then they also have handles here in the back to open the second row, which is really nice. Drop the second row, I should say. Um, so you can get stuff in here without having to run up to the second row, open the door, kick the seats down, and do everything from the back hatch. As a passenger in the back, I get plenty of room here. Um, seats do slide forward and back, which is really nice. Um, so you can get a little bit more leg room, as well as different charging ports. So there's a USB-C. There is a standard USB as well as a 120 outlet. You can charge all kinds of stuff. A little storage down here, cup holders, armrests, so everybody is super comfortable as well as a skylight. And from the driver's seat, what you're going to be able to control um, down here, you're going to have your heated seats for both front passengers. Um, the all wheel drive selection is down here on a rotating turn knob, as well as a few other safety features, which you can access from here. Uh, one is downhill descent control, which is somewhat of an off road feature. Um, what that's going to allow you to do is going down steep grades at very low speeds, so that speeds under 20 miles an hour. Um, engaging that is going to make the vehicle vehicle do all the braking uh, for you, which is basically like a reverse cruise control, um, <clears throat> just in slow speeds going downhill, as well as your selector switch for the lane keep assist, which works at higher speeds now, um, that speeds above 37 miles an hour, that'll actually read the lines on the road using cameras in here, um, and it'll actually steer you back in the center of your lane if, uh, if you start drifting over those lines. Uh, this particular ve uh, vehicle does come with the selector switch for the auto stop start, um, which the auto stop start is the feature where the engine shuts off at red lights to conserve fuel. Um, that can be toggled off, as well as the traction selection system, which is going to help the computer figure out which power or which tire needs power. Um, hazard lights and then the parking sensor. So if you're towing a boat, have something back there, you can toggle those sensors off so the car isn't beeping at you constantly. Um, and on the newer Acadias, they 
went to a electronic precision shift is what GM calls this. Um, so instead of there being a column shifter here or a center, center console shifter here taking up space, they moved it to electronic. Um, so pretty easy setup here. Anything that makes the car move, you pull. Anything that makes the car stop, you push. So park, neutral and then a gear limiter, which is gonna limit the high gear the transmission will shift to. It's not so much a manual shift option as much as it is uh, you know, a limiter for maybe coming down some, some steep grades you know, at those higher speeds. And then you also have a tri-zone climate control, which can be um, controlled from up here or the back seat passengers have their own controls in the back if they wish to have them. Um, what makes it really nice is the climate control so basically like the thermostat of your house, you can just set that to your temperature, hit auto, and then you're off. You know, it's gonna do the AC, the heat, does it all for you. You don't have to mess with your fan speed and try and get that perfect temperature. You just select it and it does itself. So really nice there. Um, big touchscreen, everything here does come with the navigation built into the screen. Type your address in up here, as well as Bluetooth for the phone. Radio, AM, FM, XM, all can be toggled here on the left-hand side of the screen. Then you also have the wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, which is gonna allow you to connect your phone to it via Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi in the car. That's gonna let you put your Google Maps or your Apple Maps up here as your turn-by-turn -turn navigation in lieu of the navigation that comes from GM, um, as well as, you know, text to speak from Siri or the Google Assistant so you can carry on full text conversations with people without ever pulling your phone out of your pocket while you're driving down the road so really nice features built in there um, and then moving over to this side everything behind the steering wheel you have a digital speedometer behind there they also put the miles till empty on your home screen which is really nice you don't have to toggle through a whole bunch of uh, different screens to try and figure out you know how much longer you can drive the car before you need to head to a gas station and then steering wheel mounted controls which are in very good uh, positions makes it very easy to, to not have to look around and, and take your eyes off the road to try and figure out where everything is uh, these buttons here toggle everything back there quick answer for phone calls hang up forward collision alert another safety feature that's built into a lot of our cars it's going to pick up any objects in front of you that are slowing or stopped and if you're not applying the brake you're going to get four red lights that get flashed up onto the windshield from here as well as a different tone that you're not going to hear any other time um, that's alerting you to hit the brakes because uh, you're about to get into a, a collision up front and then you have your standard Light selection here, auto, which means it's gonna come on when it gets dark outside. It uses a sensor up there on the dash to figure that out. And then windshield wipers here on the left. And then one of my favorite features that our cars have is what they call IntelliBeam. Um, and it takes the auto lights to a whole nother level where it actually makes your bright lights automatic at that point too. Um, uses different sensors up front to determine if there's any vehicles in front of you. It picks up headlights and tail lights. Um, and if it sees those, if the car notices that there's a vehicle in front of you, bright lights are off. If you're on a wide open road, no vehicles around, it engages the bright lights for you so you're not toggling back and forth here. It's just doing it all on its own. And last but not least up here, we have the sunroof. This one's gonna open. I touched on the back one earlier. That's just a skylight. The glass does not move, um, but you can open and close this one. And it does come with a vent feature too, so you can vent the back of it out. Um, so if it's raining or something, you can kick the back open without getting wet. And GM did carry the styling cues from the outside to the inside as well. So the AT4 does have its own interior specific trim. Um, you get the AT4 on the headrest as well as the Kalahari stitching around the perimeter of the, the seats there, which makes it look really nice uh, without being super overbearing. And one of the last safety features and one of the most used is the blind spot monitors in the mirrors. That little car and star emblem there will light up if anybody's in your blind spot, um, as well as there may be a car that's coming up on you really quickly, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, those will still alert you that, uh, that somebody may be in your blind spot uh, soon, as opposed to, to right this second. So it's got a, a, a dual function to it as well. And that concludes today's video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, you can contact me today.